Hey everyone, higher running coach and Hoka athletes H Canada here with another training talk Tuesday or Thursday, hopefully coming out. But thanks for all your questions and support on here. We're gonna go with the question I saw. Um, I purchased your BQ marathon training plan. Uh, that's the one that Coach Sandy and I make at Higher Running, and I have set my marathon goal pace off of a recent half marathon race. 127.47, great time by the way, and that's a good strategy to do. And the VDOT calculator, uh, more on that later, how would one uh, know if the goal marathon pace is too ambitious? If some, someone is capable of completing the weekly mileage injury free, yet can't always hit the paces with recommended effort on the workout days, should the goal pace be altered until one can consistently achieve the workouts? I've run a few marathons and have been running regularly over 50 miles per week, about 80K per week, uh, for five years. Love the channel and Vice. Uh, you've been my go-to information for years. Oh, thanks so much for those kind words and support. He's talking about VDOT tables, which is a term uh, used in the Jack Daniels Distance Running Formula book. Jack Daniels, the, not the whiskey guy, the coach. Uh, VDOT referring to coming from VO2 max, actually, and using a lot of data on at maximum oxygen carrying capacity in the lab. They test these things with the numbers, but also running economy or efficiency. So if you think of yourself like a car, uh, running economy is like the fuel economy of the car, right? How many miles per gallon you get, except we're talking about oxygen use as you run. So efficiency, uh, just tied up in a lot of things. And whereas VO2 max would be like the horsepower, right? You're revving your, your big power, the heart and lung capacity, how fast you could get oxygen to your working muscles. So for marathon times, that's not always the best predictor. Running economy is probably the best predictor, but they kind of go together. So he's using data in that. Other things like uh, your watch, your smartwatch might use an algorithm uh, to roughly calculate, predict your marathon time, as well as a lot of online calculators, so to speak. They're using algorithms a lot of times, crunching averages, estimating things. Now, that may or may not be a good thing for you, and you may or may not fall into that. So, for example, if you're mainly a 5K runner, and you've just started running, and you run less than 30 miles a week, 50K a week, you might run a fast 5K time, but if you don't start doing long runs and progressively higher mileage, what your 5K time might be predicted, extrapolated to, so to speak, in the marathon by your watch or some calculator or even the VDOT tables, uh, probably is not going to be accurate because you don't have the specific marathon training and experience to run really well at the longer distance. Likewise, there could be some genetic factors in there too. Maybe you come from a sprinting background. Maybe you're naturally a 100 meter, 200 meter sprinter. You have a lot of fast switch muscle fibers. It might be hard or it might take more time at least to convert that up to a really fast marathon time. Uh, but the opposite might be true. You might be a really naturally born marathon runner and you can't run the mile or 5K super fast because your VO2 max is naturally lower. So there's a genetic variation in there and we're talking about averages here. He's pulled together a lot of data, but you know it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're gonna run in the marathon. Um, you, you could exceed that though as you get better. And a lot of people I think haven't reached their full potential in the sport of distance running, especially at the longer distances. Cause really as you get older, you get more mature, you have a bigger aerobic base. Uh, you generally get more stamina and endurance and you could pull out more of your speed, but you have to train smart and you have to race in good conditions. And that's the other thing that I'll touch on later. But uh, you know, this uh, question going off a 127 half marathon, we're gonna work around that, that time goal there. So. Uh, let's say you, your PR in the half marathon is 130, and your goal eventually is to crack three hours in the marathon. A very good time, Boston qualifier, uh, well under the Boston qualifying time uh, for all the age ranges basically now, I think. And, you know, not something that everyone could do for sure, but you certainly can't do it unless that half marathon PR is significantly under 130, right? Uh, if you've trained for a long time, you've run pretty high mileage, we're gonna say high mileage being 60 miles a week or 100K per week for maybe several years, and you're between 20 to 45, 50 years old, uh, you know, you're looking at trying to get maybe your peak time and, and get closer to your maximum potential, whatever that may be. Um, if you've run a lot of half marathons, you've done a lot of 5Ks and 10Ks, you've optimized your half marathon time down to 130 and you just can't get it any faster. You ran it in good white race conditions. You ran it very evenly paced. It was a nice flat course. You had your carbon fiber plated shoes on. You paced it well, you trained really well. 
um, until you get that speed down, until you get that half marathon time down uh, to 125 or faster, it's going to be really hard to run two sub 130 half marathons back to back and crack that three hour barrier. Some people might not do it. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of people find, uh, that as they do more specific marathon training and they get more advanced into the sport and they race in good conditions on a fast course that sometimes they could set a PR in the, in route as your first split of your, your full marathon, you come through that half marathon, you actually run a PR, maybe even set a PR at the 10 K and then you're able to hold on. It is very hard though to hold on and a negative split or even split a marathon. Usually people slow down by at least a couple minutes uh, for their second half split in, in a road marathon. And that's kind of optimal pacing actually to know that you got the best out of yourself. Um, so, you know, going by that, it is good to go by recent race performances. And uh, as this question asked, should I dial back some of mar my marathon paces until I could, uh, or adjust my goal pace? I'd say certainly yes. Um, you definitely want to be in control and not try to overextend yourself in marathon training because you might already be running pretty high mileage, pretty high volume each week. You're smashing hard long runs, especially long runs over 20 miles or 32K in our, our more advanced marathon training programs. You have to do some hard long runs. It's not all LSD, long, slow distance. There's, you're throwing down some paces there. Uh, but if you get too ambitious, if you're just 10 seconds a mile too fast or six seconds per kilometer too fast, uh, you know, that could lead to poor form. It could lead to too much lactate levels in your bloodstream. You're overextending yourself. Instead of being in zone three, you're in zone four. Uh, the heart rate spikes could get too high and you could be overtraining. And likewise, it could set you up to go out too fast in a marathon. So what's a reasonable goal pace? Well, if your PR is 127 and a half, uh, you're looking, you're looking at close to sub three, maybe, but maybe you're not quite there. Maybe, uh, you know, if you could run a 125 or faster, then you could maybe go out at 129 and try to hold on for that sub three. 127, you're looking more realistically at going out in, in 132, 131 in the half. And that's if you're optimally trained. So maybe getting very close to the three hour barrier, but you might surprise yourself. You might surprise yourself later on in the marathon training cycle. And again, it comes back to some genetic factors, a lot of lifestyle factors, a little bit of luck, and following the training program, being flexible with your times on the day, realizing weather conditions and wind and heat and humidity could greatly affect that as well as hydration strategy, how uh, dialed you are with your in-race nutrition, taking gels during the marathon, shoe choice, staying healthy, things like that. Um, and yeah, it's an advanced plan. A lot of the workouts will be based off of a rough goal pace. And a lot of the workouts are not only around marathon goal pace, but it'll be like 10 seconds a mile faster or 15 seconds per mile faster than your goal marathon race pace. So, you know, if you're starting to hit that in really long tempo interval types of workouts, like uh, two mile repeats or three K repeats, or even three mile or five K repeats, we're talking about doing, you know, two to three reps of, of these longer repeats at significantly faster than goal marathon pace. That's a good indicator workout that your lactate threshold, your tempo run pace is going to be quite a bit faster. It's going to make marathon pace feel more faster, but the predictor workouts are going to be hitting those speed workouts, uh, hitting the tempo workouts, and then hitting uh, long runs where you feel relatively comfortable, relatively comfortable on tired legs, maybe at the end of a 20 mile long run, running your marathon goal pace uh, in, in, the, in a workout uh, without tapering. So that's really the key. You've got to stay healthy, stay have, have fun out there, stay, keep the progression alive and realize the race predictors, the VDOT tables, the race calculators are not the end all. You could exceed it. You could fall short from it. You have to train specifically for the event that it's targeting. So this works both ways. You could run a marathon time. It predicts a fast 5k time. Well, if you don't do any speed work, that 5k time might be hard to hit. Likewise, if you're not doing the long runs and the mileage training specifically for a marathon, your 5k time, your, your 10k time, your half marathon time isn't going to convert up probably for a lot of people, especially with those VDOT tables, uh, using running economy efficiency and your VO2 max values, as well as the algorithms crunching the numbers. There's a lot of variance and, and difference there between them. So thank you so much for following along again, support this channel on Patreon, got a Patreon page. It really helps me out a lot. Shout out to title sponsor. Hoka, keeping the dream alive. Uh, you can follow me across social media at Sage Canday. Got a new series training for UTMB. So I do mountain ultra trail running, 
Thank you so much. Hope you're doing well. And uh, check out our training plans at higherrunning.com or Coach Sandy and I uh, sell training plans. Also check out her channel, Running Wild. Thank you again. Hope you're doing well. And stay tuned for more via 2Max Productions.